Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to walk you through how I edit my automotive work in Adobe Lightroom. Before getting started, if you could drop a like down below, hit it, smash it like 2020 smashed all of us. Sorry. Really helps out the YouTube algorithms and really helps my channel. So today I went to a Cars and Coffee event in Indianapolis at a local performance business and I ran around and I shot some photos with my Nikon D3400 and my Canon 80D which is what I'm shooting with right now. I decided to go through some photos to pick out my favorite ones I want to edit with you today. I'll be showing some of my tips and tricks that I have learned over the last couple of years doing this. And I'll also show off a little bit of how I build my presets, which by the way, I am building two preset packs at this moment. They will be released in the next coming weeks. So if you're watching this right now, just keep checking back to see if the link is down below. If you're watching this far into the future, I can positively, hopefully guarantee that those links will be down in the description below. So keep an eye out for those. I took a look back at the last video I did, which will pop up in one of these corners here. And I saw that the video was very long. So I kind of want to try and keep this short and sweet. Obviously though, if you have any questions, you can always drop them in the comment section down below. So we're going to go ahead and go over here to my monitor and we're going to take a look at one of the first photos that I have marked here. Now, I did shoot between my D3400 and my ADD. This first photo starting off, we're using the Nikon D3400 with the 55 to 200 millimeter lens and a variable ND filter. Starting off, I like to crop my photos. Because I post my work on Instagram, I have to be sure that whatever it is I want in that photo meets their dimensions that they have set, which is five by seven for landscape and four by three for portraits. So I do that, just go over here. I'm gonna crop this one to the four by three. And now we see that the tops and bottom of this photo is gonna be cropped out. Just get that in focus. I really wanted to draw the attention to the taillight of this car. That looks good, we'll hit in there. So next, what I like to do is go to my optics and enable lens correction. Now lens correction is based on what lens that you're using. And right now you can see that automatically detects the profile I have for this lens. And really what it does is it flattens out your image and it makes it look less like it's got a barrel shape. There's plenty of detail out there on the internet that talks about the barrel shape, the warping that you get in some lenses. So this is just a good way to help flatten it out. And I like to do that next. The most important part is making sure that everything we want in focus is in focus. Now, I did this prior to making this video so that you didn't have to sit through watching me go through all these photos and seeing which ones are in focus and not in focus. Luckily, this one was in focus. And so we're gonna be taking a look at this zoomed in. And we can see that the tail light is in focus we can see that the badge is in focus. And once we go away from the car, everything in the background has a really nice bokeh. And the way that I captured this to get that compression was, I was very far back and I was zoomed in almost all the way on my lens and really helped compresses that car in focus. And that guy was hitting the brakes at the time. So it was perfect because it's a little bit of a darker area since he was in the shade and I really wanted that to stand out. This next part is my personal favorite and that's gonna be with lighting. So over here on the right hand side, we have our lighting panel. And typically what I like to do in situations where it's a very bright setting such as this, or if you have a lot of green, yellows and oranges, if you're like at a park or something, I like to go to the point curve and I like to make a very simple S curve. The S curve is a common use technique that I've learned from watching other people. And it's honestly one of the safest bets that you can have when it comes to adjusting your lighting in your photos. There are some different techniques to make it a little bit different here and there. That's not the typical S curve. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just bring down the shadows here a little bit. I like to just kind of move it back around and see like how dark it makes it. I do like how the tail light is still very bright compared to the rest of the shaded area. So we're not gonna have to do too much to that part. 
But then over here in the middle, in the mid-tones, we're gonna bring that up just above to brighten up some areas. And then we're going to get another one up here, bring it down a little bit to soften some of the lighting. And this one up top is a default one. I usually just bring that over a little bit and then maybe adjust this because I want a pretty smooth looking S curve. Now this isn't rocket science. So if you are kind of like, well, I don't like the S curve, I, I don't think this is very useful. By all means, it doesn't matter. This is just the way I do it. Because at this point, what I can do is I can bring the midtones up and down and it really helps me adjust the lighting throughout the entire photo while maintaining the integrity of the shadows and the highlights. And again, just play around with this. But for time's sake, we're gonna go ahead and just set this in place where it's a happy medium. Now I don't just do the point curve typically. You can also go to your tone curve. And again, you can do something similar here. I use more the point curve um, than the tone curve. I've been trying to use the tone curve a little bit more. Um, but if you want to do the same thing here, you can. It's, it's kind of redundant from what I'm looking at. But again, I just do a very, very soft S-curve. And I think overall, it really helps bring the lighting to life. So this is the before, and this is the after so far. And I think it makes it look a lot more crisp, a lot more clear. Because I shoot in RAW format, this is a very important step because you have dynamic range at your disposal. So if your camera's really good with dynamic range, then you have the ability to bring out the shadows really well, and you can manipulate the light very easily, in my opinion. So we'll go ahead and we'll tweak a little bit of the exposure up here. I kind of want to go with a little bit of like darker tone, but I'm only going to do a 0.15 in the negative because I don't want to make it too dark. There's not too many highlights. Now over here in this area, it's pretty blown out next to where that dumpster was. So what we'll do is we'll dial this back and make sure we don't go too high. Maybe dial it back a little bit more. We'll do negative 14. And then with shadows, with this, you can do a lot of fun stuff with. If you like to do very moody scenes, you can drop the shadows down. I like to keep them some, somewhat in the middle uh, for this particular photo because it's already very dark. With your whites, if, you if you're shooting a white car, this is really fun to play with. I have an edit I did recently where I really manipulated the color white um, just with this bar, and it was really fun to use. But we bring this back down, and it's similar to the highlight. So you can see the wall up in the top right is being affected dramatically by this when we go up and down. So I do want to dial it back a little bit, but not too much to where it just makes this look super bland and gray. Because um, again, that will still pull the attention away from what I want it to be at. For blacks, it's just like with the shadows. You can bring it down a bit to really give a dramatic look, kind of like this. This is honestly pretty cool in my opinion, but it's way too dark. So we're going to keep that up here a little bit. We might even bring it up just a tad bit to kind of offset how dark it is. Now, once we're done with the lighting, we'll move on to the color. This is a very fun part for me because I like to manipulate color to really bring out the car itself. So with this, I'm going to go that route. So you're gonna just see it step by step. I like to set it to a certain profile, especially when it comes to color grading. So you can do vivid, that already gives it a very high contrast look. Um, but I'm totally okay with doing something more like standard in this scenario. Because when I shoot these photos, I'm shooting in a neutral style. So the color is pretty bland. And then that way it gives me better editing opportunity and post-production so I can really manipulate those colors. So looking at this car, you can see how cool tone it is. And again, in the shadows, it's light out. You got a lot of blues. What I like to start off with is bringing down the vibrance. And what this is going to do is it's going to make the, the colors really just seep away in the entire photo. But what I'm actually doing is I'm taking away color from the background here. And then I'm going to bring the attention back to the car later on when I do more color grading. 
So in order to pull up the color for this car, it is a gray car. So it's not like we have to bring it out too much, but I also don't want to, you know, lose the emphasis on this light. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here. I'm actually going to bring the vibrance back up just a little bit. And on the color mixer down here, the aquas, I always bring the aquas down when it comes to the cars because you get that aqua color in the wind, in the windshield, in the windows, whenever you're shooting in daylight. So I always bring that down. In this scenario, it's not really affecting anything in the photo. Um, but again, I usually bring the saturation all the way down or you can bring the luminance down as well. It, it doesn't really matter. The luminance just darkens that area. So then next with the blues, we're going to bring that down because that's what we have here in the car. So I'm gonna just play with the saturation, bring it down. And now you see it pretty much vanish from the car itself. So it's really great that the background doesn't have a lot of blues in it. There's no blue sky, so you don't have to worry about taking away all the life energy out of the sky. Um, but I really like how it just brings back the actual color of the car without any of that reflection. And this entire time, what you may have noticed is this tail light is still very much in focus and is the center of the photo. And that's exactly what I want. Now with this car in the background, I do like how it gives that depth of feel. Um, I don't want it to be such high in saturation and contrast that it's going to pull the viewer's attention towards it. So with, with this part right here, I'm actually going to dial it back a little bit in saturation. And let's see what luminance does. So luminance kind of messes with it in the background. Saturation really messes it with it in the background right here. And it's just that one part of the car. So I think we should be okay there. Um, I'm going to bring it down maybe a tad. Maybe there. And then we're going to check the purples. Because this car that was in front of it was more of a maroon. But in the shade and different lighting, it can reflect different colors. So we'll mess with the purples. And you can see that right here. If you bring that on saturation, it really brings away from that car. And that's what I'm looking for. I want to bring away from that car, not this dramatic because it obviously looks terrible. Um, you do kind of want to keep it even. So we're going to just bring it down a little bit. And then we're also going to check the pinks. And so you see like this part of the car now is got the pinks. So this is like purple, pink, and then reds. Like we know it's there. We want to see that it's there. We just don't want it to be such an, an eyesore that people's attention is going to be pulled that direction. Me personally, I really like to make cars look very clean, very clear, crisp in these photos. I've even done some photos where it looks hyper-realistic, where the reflection of the car is just so great, it almost looks like it was just recently polished. And I try to make it as you know realistic as possible. I mean, this car is very clean, so I really probably don't have to do a whole lot to it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring clarity up a little bit. And all in all, it already does a really good job at making this look even more clear and reflective. If I bring it all the way up, you can see how it dramatically impacts the entire photo. And it just looks too fake, in my opinion. I mean, some scenarios you could probably do that and get away with it. But what we're going to do is we're going to bring that back down to around the 20 range, which is kind of where I leave it. Because then when I go to dehaze, it's going to it's going to tone down a little bit and darken the photo a little a little bit around you know the shadows and stuff which i think keeping those two around each other within the similar range is kind of my style grain i don't mess with grain in photos like this because i want there to be no texture and next i'm going to go on the detail with sharpening and the detail section what you can do is you can click on that um, it's not very easy to tell but I, I bring it up just a little bit because i want this car to be sharpened up a little bit and leave everything else in the background um, still blurred out so it should make these lines a little bit more crisp if we bring it all the way up you can see a very small amount of noise coming in here but we're going to bring that back. We're not going to do it too high. We're going to just keep it right about there. I think that's a happy medium. And for noise reduction, 
depending on your settings that you shoot with your lens, you're not gonna have too terrible amount of noise. I always shoot as low of ISO as possible to avoid a lot of noise, but we're gonna go ahead and bring up the noise reduction here to really get rid of just that natural noise I get in my lenses. And zoomed out, it doesn't look like a whole lot. So like I just reset it back to zero and it doesn't look like there's a whole lot of noise, which is perfect. But when I zoom in, I want there to be no noise. So I bring that up and it's usually around 40 to 50 for me, depending on this, the way I'm shooting my camera. Next for this photo, I'm gonna skip over the rest of the detail and then I'm going to go into the next part, which is more of like the final part of my editing process, which is my linear gradients and my radial gradients. These gradients are going to be very crucial in all of my shots because I want to pull the attention towards a car. If I'm far away from a car and it's in a wide open parking lot, you have a lot of ground to cover in front of the car and you. So I usually use the linear gradients to darken that area. And I might darken the sky a little bit because what that does is it closes in on the car itself. So you're focusing on the car. In this particular case with linear gradients, there's not a whole lot of real estate to work with. So I'm going to maybe bring in a linear gradient from up here, down at an angle, and I'm gonna mess with the exposure. Darken up this wall back here because again, I wanna pull away from the background and I wanna shift your focus to the car itself. You can also do another one down here on the ground to darken that up. That's a little too dark, so I'm gonna bring that back up just a little bit. But again, we're darkening the areas around the actual car itself. So if you can see my cursor, just imagine this little arch shape around the car and it's gonna pull it in towards the car itself. But another method you can use is with the radial filter, which I use both radial and linear with each other because there's some things that linear is really great at like covering a large amount of area in a straight line and the radial is very good when you're shooting an object or a person because then you can just put the circle around or the ellipses it could be a circle and ellipses and you can put it around the subject and you can directly expose contrast highlight shadows that one subject and if you really wanted to, you can invert that. So when I do exposure, it, it does everything around that area that you have highlighted. Spot here for it. And I always try to put the center of the circle at the center or the center of mass for the object I'm shooting. So that way the feathering is gonna go from that point outward. And in this particular case, we are trying to keep focus on the light itself. However, since the light is very much in focus already, I wanna bring the color back to the car. So I'm gonna just keep it in the center of mass of the car here. So we're gonna bring this down a little bit uh, because up here, this is still pretty much in focus and lighted perfectly. And this right here, I wanna try and bring the color back a little bit more. Exposure, I'm gonna brighten it up just a little bit and then lastly, what we can do to really put emphasis on the STI badge and or the light itself, um, we can do another radial and we just highlight that one spot right there. I'm actually gonna zoom in so it's easier to see. I'm gonna highlight that one spot right there and we're gonna saturate it just a little bit and then bring it up. See how it does that? the color. This is a really nice tool. I love it because you can separate the rest of the, of the items. Um, we're going to bring it up to about 46. I know that seems like a lot, but that's a really dark spot of the car. And I really want people to see that that badge is there. And then <clears throat> next we can do another one here on the light itself. Again, put it in the center of mass bring up the saturation not too much because when you bring it up too high you can definitely tell it's too high in saturation so we're gonna bring it up to probably plus nine and then exposure maybe bring it down to negative 0.4 because then that way you see the detail 
in the light itself. So if I undo that, you can see how there's a little bit of exposure here that we don't want. So if we bring it down, you can tell that the most effective part is right here in the middle. So it darkens that and keeps it more of an even lighting situation across this reverse light. So this photo is pretty much already done. Now normally I'd go back and do some minor adjustments here and there to really make sure that I'm not overdoing it in some areas or I'm not underdoing it. But for the sake of the video, I want to make sure that I get you through the general process of my editing in Adobe Lightroom uh, for my automotive work and then carry that over into another photo, which I will more than likely show you up on screen right now. Um, because again, I don't want this video to be too terribly long. So I'm going to just have some of these photos up on screen that I've shot today. As always, thank you so much for tuning in. If you like this video, please smash the like button down below. It really helps out the channel, helps me grow, helps me learn. And as I get presets made and released, I will be making more videos highlighting those presets in different scenarios that I shoot in, different cars, different areas, different tones. And so if you want to keep up to date on that, please be, make sure to hit the subscribe button and notification bell so that way you're notified when those videos come out. Hope you had an awesome day. See you later. You can go as far as simply deleting this. And why did it do that? I don't know. You can go as far as deleting this point right here and it did it again.